be a bit of a traffic jam today. It's 15 bucks to get in in a car for the toll. Free if you're on a bicycle. Whoa. Bicycle handles a little differently on uh, with the panners on it. A lot more wind resistance. I don't know what this is. Maybe to keep jumpers off of here? I don't know. Anyway, I'm on my way. So from here, I go straight down the west side bicycle path, all the way down to uh, Lower Manhattan, hopefully Wall Street, where I used to work. So uh, I'm on my way. Up here, it's, you know, along this area of the river, it's pretty green. You see people, homeless people camping once in a while. Very few, but they're here. But it's uh, relatively safe and just uh, a real contrast. You know, I have a real contrast. I live out in a bedroom community in New Jersey and I'm within striking distance in New York. So it's, uh, Pretty good location for me. I can head up to the country, being the Catskills in an hour and a half, Adirondacks in four hours. I can be South Jersey along the shore, which is where I'm going right now, uh, in a couple in an hour or two. Cape May in like two hours, three hours. So it gives me, you know, head west to Pennsylvania. I have a lot of good East Coast experience here, you know, good East Coast locations here. So urban riding like this it's just another piece to take advantage of you got to use your head when you ride in new york city of course this bike path is perfect but uh whenever there's a disagreement between a 3,000 pound car and a 25 pound bicycle the car wins the underbelly of the west side highway we had a number of people who live here they live out in these boats they uh, drop anchor and take a dinghy to a marina and they uh, spend the summer here. There's a few that stay year round. Uh, I wouldn't say too many, but uh, just another way to try and lower your rent. And here we have a paddle boarder. A lot of ways to live in New York, that's for sure. But, uh, I don't look like, like such a bad life. You know, life on a boat's uh, a little humid, but it's nice. Is this the 79th Street Marina? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Thank you. I like this boat, I live right here. Okay. You live in a boat? No. Well, it's a nice marina. Where are you from? So that's all a Trump city. That used to be rail yards and they have Trump's name on it. I don't think he owns anything of it. So I'm under the West Side Highway now. Here's the bicycle dashboard. I got my phone strapped on for quick access. Uh, speedometer. That's about it. So this is uh, 59th and uh, 11th Avenue. This is where the uh, West Side Highway dumps you out. And here is the uh, Pyramid Building. If you've ever wanted to live in a pyramid, here's your chance. Electric scooters are all over. Some of them go pretty fast. Hey, what's the range on that thing? Not that bad. Not that bad? A couple of miles? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Is where all the cruise ships are. Now these guys come in on the weekends for the most part. They hang out here. They come here on a Saturday or a Sunday and it's just a zillion people exiting the ships. Here's the Intrepid Museum. You could just make out the SR2 Blackbird up there, the fastest plane ever built. It uh, cruises at like 3,000 miles an hour. Pretty amazing. And you got all of Manhattan here. It's 
some more intrepid. It's definitely busier down here. A lot of uh, human transport vehicles like these scooters and electric bikes. 100 bucks a year to rent the city bike, which is a pretty good deal. There's a circle line and a red light for bicycles. Some of my working days, I worked all over Manhattan. And uh, that doesn't make me any better than anybody else. But it was all fun. And now I'm down here enjoying it. I used to hate the city, but now I'm having fun here. City bike, here's a city bike docking station. If you're here in New York, you can rent these bikes. I don't know what the daily rate is. I know it's $100 a year. A lot of commuters use them. I'm seeing them everywhere. They're a really big success and it's a great way to get around Manhattan. I'm down in the uh, financial district now, lower Manhattan. And uh, a lot of new construction where the old World Trade Center was. Like 20 miles? 20 miles, good, thank you. Yeah, cement life building. I don't know what a lot of these buildings are anymore. A lot of new construction. blocking my view of the statue. I think I'm on Water Street. I used to work here. It looks like 55 Water over there. I worked in that building for a while. I worked all over this area. Like I say, it doesn't make me a better person. I just happen to have earned money here. <laughs> Not a lot either. So you come down here uh, to Water Street and behind Water Street is South Street. And there you'll find this ferry terminal. And you give them 31 bucks and you get the, uh, the uh, ticket to go to Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey. And uh, that 31 includes three something, three dollars for the uh, for the bicycle. So it's not a bargain, but hey, I'm good. Al Street Seaport. I'm just looking for a food truck. I'm not looking for fine dining. I just want something I can eat while I keep an eye on my bicycle. One thing about New York, you don't want to leave your bicycle alone for a second. I don't have much time to get something to eat, so I'm gonna go to one and I'm gonna take a chance on one of these food carts. And uh, everything's being cooked up, All right? Everything good? How's business? Good? Looks okay. Got a little generator here, powering it. Let's see what he comes up with. I ordered the Italian sausage. Let's see what if it looks like that. This is, uh, this is what I ordered. This is what I got. A little different. Always a lot going on down here.
on the bike, I put reflectors back here, reflectors over here, and a tail light, a little more visibility. My favorite way to travel. This is where the ferry leaves you off. Highlands, New Jersey, that is. So from the ferry, I picked up this bridge. It's gonna take me into towards Sandy Hook. From there, I pick up Ocean Avenue and just head south. I'm just winging it. It's more fun that way. Bridge takes you to Seabright, and you're right in the ocean here, which is uh, perfect for me. So as you come off the bridge from Seabright, you hit a bike path. Perfect. So this bicycle, it's a 1992 vintage, and it's, uh, it's been really good. The painting of this mural got a little cheeky there. Down here are pretty good. You got your own bike lane. It's not all this good, but it's mostly good. Uh, flat, you know, shoreline flat, which is great. There's few things in life that are as free as bicycle touring. It's just, uh, you know, backpacking is freedom of wilderness, right? Isolation, it's great. Trailer camping is kind of in the middle. But uh, bicycle camping, uh, bicycle touring, I'm gonna stay in a hotel. Bicycle touring is freedom of mobility. Freedom of choice, you wanna eat one place or another place, you just go. For me, bicycling is a perfect speed. Walking's too slow and driving's too fast. The bicycling, you get the, uh, sights, sounds, and smells of the area. You don't miss anything. It's perfect for me. Checking into a hotel in uh, Asbury Park. Here's a hotel room with tax and everything, came to $140 a night, 120 something. Initially they said 200 and some odd dollars. I balked and uh, had a chat with them and they were able to give me this one for 129 or 140. Uh, I'm never impressed by hotel rooms. You know, I love nature, but I'll take it. You know, they gave me an ocean view also, which was a nice touch. I can sit out here with my binoculars later and uh, take a look at what's going on. Perfect weather today. This is Asbury Park, New Jersey. Uh, next on the agenda is to get everything charging, like my camera batteries, telephone, and then find some food. Asbury Fest Hall Beer Garden is the uh, recommended place for dinner. Let's see. Potato pancakes with sour cream and applesauce and really good beer. The beer is delicious. It's really good. This is the food menu. It's one page. This is the beer menu. Two pages. Yeah, uh, what other beer do you have? 
um, many. That whole entire beer. I know. It's beer. similar to what I had. Dark beer. Another so. dark beer would be Kostritzer. Are they brewed? Is this brewed here? Nothing's brewed here, unfortunately. Yeah. You know, I'll stick with this one. This well, is good. I don't know what it was, but. That's Poland or Salvatore I gave you. Okay, thank you. No words are needed. Uh, on this trip, I didn't bring much stuff. I couldn't. I only have the panners, the panniers, to uh, hold it. And uh, I have a, a Gore-Tex jacket here. Uh, I have a pair of binoculars, tiny pair of binoculars. It's migration season. It's a good time to catch a lot of birds. For lighting, uh, I brought a multi-purpose. This is a Phoenix LD12 flashlight. It runs on one AA battery. puts out a lot of lumens. And I have a uh, a little uh, U Velcro on U holder for this, made by uh, Two Fish, which allows me to use it as a bicycle headlight. It's really it's a good bicycle headlight for moderate speeds. I'll show you that uh, when I have it out. I'll show you the Two Fish lock block. One of the things I need when I'm bicycle touring is uh, lighting. Uh, like in this particular case, I'll be staying at a hotel, and I need to go out and forage for food later and uh, I need a light. So I need a flashlight also, so why not combine them both? Now there's a million different solutions to bicycle lighting, and this is just one. I'm not saying it's the best or anything like that, it's just one that I use. So in this case, I'm using a uh, Phoenix, I think it's an LD12. Yes, it is an LD12, it runs on one AAA. It can put out, you know, a lot of lumens, depending on which battery you're using, but I like the fact that it uses double A's, which are very accessible, easily available. So the mounting is made by Two Fish, and all it is is a clever, inexpensive mount. And what it is is a, a rubber flashlight holder, Catron plastic. It's impervious to UV, and it's offset, so it fits right over the. Uh, it's called a lock block. It's written on the side of this. Um, it says lock block. So you just Velcro this to your handlebar, throw in your flashlight, and you can go. Now, it's not meant for mountain biking and the rough terrain and stuff, but it's just a, a really great thing to have along on a bicycle tour. Or if you're going to be out riding in the evening this time of year, you know, fall, and you may get caught out late, this is a great thing. You know, it doesn't cost very much. I already had the flashlight. Just add the lock block in my bag, and I have lighting to get home if I'm out after dark. So here it is, you know, in travel mode, and it's uh, very lightweight, only a few grams, and pretty compact, squishable. So it's something to consider. I'm not recommending it, I'm just saying it's something that I use. And on the rear, I have uh, a Planet Bike. Uh, um, super fusion light which uh, helps keep away the cars reflectors on the panners I did want to show you the panners let me pack it up I'll show you some features on the panners which are important so I don't know the cubic inches on these panners I bought them a while ago I have a couple of sets of panners at home these are made by Madden Mountaineering or Madden Outdoor and uh, I don't know if that company's still in business but uh, this was one of their better products that's for sure uh, you have lash points up on top if you need them, uh, which are which are good. And you have a small zipper pocket here for quick to access things. I put on the reflectors. Anything to keep the cars away will help. But um, these panners, they can be they have snaps on them, and they can be snapped together uh, to use them as luggage when you're if you're on a flight or a train or a bus or something, and you need to uh, snap them together. You can do that. Now, for riding on the bicycle, they basically hang by two hooks on the, uh, on the bicycle rack. And there is a bungee, a pretty powerful bungee here. But what they did was they put ladder stitching in here. And you can move this, you can change positions on this depending how you want it to ride on the, on the bike rack. Now, in my case, um, I need to make sure that when my pedal rotates, my foot clears the pannier. 
and I had to move <coughs> the panner a little bit rear, a little bit towards the rear, and what helps keep it there is this, uh, this positioning on the bungee. I move the bungee forward, which forces the panner back a little bit, and it just creates a friction. Now there's also these Velcro attachment points. These would go on the uh, on the uh, on the chain on the seat stay there. They can they can attach on the seat stay, and this attaches to the rack. Um, this Velcro on top. I attach that to the top of the rack, and that will hold the panner on when I'm hitting bumps and it will prevent it from bouncing off the bicycle. Um, you have to pack everything pretty carefully. Anything that's vibration susceptible, you want to you know, wrap it in clothing and all because it's a hardtail bike, there's no shock absorber, and I don't want a shock absorber. So uh, that just keeps it all uh, stable in the pack and protected. Uh, again, a little pocket out here for quick to access things. Now for myself, I use a, uh, a waist pack uh, a lumbar pack or a fanny pack, they have a lot of names now, and uh, this just carries my personal items uh, and keeps, you know, my wallet, my keys, if I want to lock the bike, uh, a couple other things are in there, uh, condoms and lube, uh, whatever else I need, you know. And then uh, for, and everything closes tight on here. Um, so, you know, it has these uh, straps on the side. There's two straps, uh, one here, horizontal straps. This helps uh, stabilize the load, and I can tighten this down to keep everything snug. Now, this is a, a vintage panner. It's uh, it's it's not new. Um, the newer ones have come with a, a heavy-duty plastic coating on them, and uh, to help with waterproofing. Now, you know, it, it's personal choice, but for me, I find that uh, I brought a couple of lightweight uh, white thin kitchen garbage bags with me. I have always found the best waterproofing that I could provide was to line the bag with a, uh, a plastic garbage bag and uh, that tends to um, be the best waterproofing I can get. It keeps out humidity and everything. You know, um, and it's pretty lightweight. I brought two garbage bags with me, but the weather is good, thank goodness, and I don't have to worry. I, I don't like riding bicycles in the rain, <laughs> but you have to sometimes. So um, I just wanted to go over these. They're great little panners. Um, sorry, I don't know if they're still made, but uh, I'm going to hang this other one on here and uh, go out and try and find breakfast because it is a beautiful day, and I can see the ocean from here. over the top of this building and it looks pretty nice. It looks like there's some wind out there too. I don't feel it. So I'll be checking out at his hotel in a few minutes. For the all-important telephone I have this uh, Night Eyes uh, phone holder here. Now you know there's a million phone holders out there you gotta find out what's good for you. I like the position of this one. Uh, it's pretty minimal, but uh, let me attach it. So the phone just bungees on with this silicone thing. It's impervious to the sun, which is good. And uh, I have quick access to the phone. Um, I did use the phone last night. I had to use Google Maps to find my way back from the restaurant. They served a lot of good beer there. I don't know if that was a factor, but uh, I kind of lost my bearings. Uh, I eventually picked them up again. You hear the ocean, you know. All I had to do was head to the ocean. But uh, so I have Google Maps on there. I download the maps in case there's no service. I can use the uh, the phone without any cellular service if you download the maps on Google Maps. So that's uh, good. I mean, I get a lot of texts all day from friends who want me to send them pictures and uh, from me on the road. So uh, so I have more room on here. You know, I, I have two of these panniers, right? And uh, I have room up on top for more gear. Um, the bike rides really well, you know, it rides real well with uh, the weight on here. I mean, it's, I'm only carrying about 15 pounds uh, on this trip of gear. Uh, and it rides really well. It handles good. There's no sway or flex, you know, when you're riding. You feel the back end swinging back and forth. The, the load is very stable. Uh, but it is providing this extra wind resistance. Uh, no way around that two panniers 
extra wind resistance and that I'm only cruising at about 14 miles an hour I could do better than that uh, without the panniers on it's not the weight because it's flat here it's the wind resistance so here's a good look at the bike you know it's a light speed ultimate uh, I put a carbon fork on it uh, the wheels I had I built the wheels they are three cross low flange hubs and the front's a campy hub and a vintage campy hub. I got a million miles on that and the back is a Shimano uh, cluster. I have low gearing uh, for this. I'm using uh, SPD pedals which are uh, recessed cleat pedals. You can kind of walk around with these a little bit when you uh, when you're off the bike. The, the shoe is heavier. It's a mountain bike shoe. I don't care. Now the bike is set up for touring. It's a, it's a lightweight racing bike but it's set up for touring because that's what I'm doing. And I have heavier wheels on here. I have uh, um, specialized armadillo tires. They're very flat proof. But they're heavy. They weigh about 400 grams each. That's a lot for a tire. Uh, you can get much lighter tires. But I, I don't want to stop and change flats, and these rarely flat. I mean, uh, I'll get a couple of thousand miles out of these tires, and if I get one flat, that's, uh, that's about it. You know, I'm pretty happy. I brought a couple of extra tubes, minimal tools to fix things. You know, a couple of wrenches and some tools that I know that I would need from experience. Uh, pump, self-sufficiency. Uh, you know, look at this frame. It's such a short wheelbase frame that it doesn't have a uh, a chainstay bridge. There's usually a piece that goes across here and welds them together for extra strength. But everything is so tight, the tolerance is that this doesn't have one. And the C-tube, <clears throat> rather than being straight, it's a little curved, which puts you uh, a little back on the, a little more weight to the rear of the bike. But uh, with that short wheelbase, this bike really handles great. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like touring with a sports car. It's really fantastic. Um, <clears throat> For my hands, I have gloves, and I bought flat top handlebars. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, they are flat top handlebars. And what that does is when you're, you know, you can get some palm damage from, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a lot of, I ride a lot. Um, this spreads out the weight over your hand. Uh, it spreads your, your hand weight over a flatter surface on the handlebars rather than just a one curved surface like this part. So you, you spreads the contact out. And I went for silicone handlebar tape. This handlebar tape was like $40. Uh, but I, uh, I, I use that and it wears really well. It's, it's comfortable to grip and it absorbs a tiny bit of shock. You know, navigation, I have a little, uh, a little uh, cyclometer, it gives me exact speed, average, you know, it gives you a bunch of statistics. Uh, uh, got the anal temperature probe on there so uh, it, uh, it's pretty good so the bike is uh, it's a real dream to ride uh, well, let me shut up and get out of here and get on the road oh yeah and be because of vibration I, uh, I carry the camera on my, uh, my my belt here you know my uh, when I'm riding my legs and my arms uh, I get out of the saddle that's like a shock absorber and your body absorbs a lot of the, uh, you know, your, your, your legs and arms absorb a lot of the vibration. So, so fragile stuff like the camera will go on to a, uh, a belt pouch on my, uh, on my waist. So on my sunglasses, these, are, these sunglasses have changeable lenses. I can put in clear lenses if I'm out after dark. Uh, but I also put on a wire mirror. And uh, this little wire holds it on my uh, ear templates on the sunglasses. And it gives me a rear view mirror. I literally have a rear view mirror on the bicycle and I, I find it very useful. Uh, I can see cars coming up on me. I can see traffic behind me. Uh, you, know, you face a lot of different conditions on the road and this is just something that helps me navigate when there's mergers, you know, uh, the road narrows. I can see who's coming up on me and when it's clear. So it's critical that my foot clear this. Now you can see this will, this will actually contact it, but in the positions that I'm riding, I guess my toe is down and my foot clears the uh, panner. Um, you can actually wear a hole in this uh, from the amount of revolutions you're doing riding pretty easily. 
So uh, positioning on the rack is critical. I'll double check it once I'm outside, but the, with this setup, I, I do have clearance when I, the way I ride. So I took off all the lettering on the, uh, on the bicycle frame. Uh, it is, like I said, a 1992. It had all these stickers all over, you know, it's like a big steal me sign, you know? So I took off everything and uh, now it looks like just a bare frame and it, it draws a lot less attention than if I didn't, if I didn't have it that way. Uh, because I'm touring, it's a wide range gearing uh, with a wide range derailleur on it to give me a nice spread of gears. I can't put a triple on this, a triple crank in the front, triple chain ring in the front, because the wheelbase is so short on this frame that the angle is too steep. I tried it and it, uh, it didn't work out for me. Uh, so I took it off and I just put on extra wide gearing for 12 speed, uh, for 18 speed. It has nine, nine gears in the back. When I bought this bike, it was a six speed and I had to uh, make changes to allow it to become a uh, nine speed, but it's all been worth it. Uh, time to go find some breakfast. Good morning. Where's a good place to find breakfast? Um, you can try the post right here on Cookman Avenue. Go out to the light, it's about three blocks up. If you go put it in your phone, it's five minutes away. Great. I uh, say goodbye to the Empress Hotel, Asbury Park. Off to toast for breakfast. So this is toast. I got the bike in clear view. It's like a pretty nice breakfast joint. Foster sauce on the. Okay, so it's banana, yeah. it's banana liqueur, um, banana rum. No, Bacardi rum. Okay. Bacardi rum on yeah. breakfast. Brown sugar, um, butter, and raw bananas. It's all, right. all, it's all cooked off. Okay, I'll have that with two eggs easy over on top of it. Okay, applesauce, pecans, and French toast. Uh, my cholesterol is low. <laughs> it's usually 160, so uh, today it might be a little higher. I'm seeing these scooters all over town. At night, they're riding around, zipping around. Looks like a lot of fun. Gotta love the uh, the architecture here. It's really nice. So the navigation is pretty easy. I keep the ocean to my left. I just gotta remember, keep the ocean to your left. I'm trying to hug the shore. Not using much maps or anything like that. Just uh, just winging it. I'm getting some major wave action here out on the beach. It's beautiful weather. Today is uh, September 20th, and uh, it's warm, sunny, beautiful temperature for riding. A lot of people out on the beach for a Friday. So it's, uh, this is the town of Bradley Beach. What's your name? John. And what are you doing today? Walking on the boardwalk. Walking on the boardwalk? You live here? I live in Asbury. Asbury? I just came from Asbury. I rode my bicycle down. Are you retired? Oh yeah, I'm retired. Yeah, how old are you? 87. 87, God bless you. <laughs> You're setting a good example. Yeah. How How's retirement you? going? Huh? How's retirement going? So, so. Yeah, finances are okay? Uh, it can be a little better. Come on. <laughs> That's true of anybody, right? Yeah. So the consensus from the locals is take Ocean Ave. And uh, that's what I'm going with. My legs feel good. I'm running on Bananas Foster and I am uh, feeling good. So, okay, here is Ocean Ave. Great, it's right up against the ocean, which is perfect. A little wind. All right, off we go. I'm riding the boardwalk for a bit. In season, you can't ride on a boardwalk, but out of season, it's, uh, it's tolerated. I just want to go a short ways, enjoy the beach a little bit. Gotta love the dogs here, they're fabulous. My little summer bungalow. Many of these towns, the boardwalk was completely ripped up by uh, Hurricane Sandy and it's been replaced. It's all new so far all the stuff I've ridden and it's uh, 
Very nice, very pleasant. A lot of surfers out today. After Hurricane Sandy, uh, the new zoning ordinance is required that the ground floor not be livable, meaning you can put a garage on the ground floor, but all the living space has to be on the second floor. So you see all this new construction from insurance money and government whatever, uh, with uh, lots of uh, flood zone below on the ground floor. So it's pretty easy to pick out the new construction from the older construction. And it looks like this area is wiped out and rebuilt. Jeez, these places are something else. God. I got a wide angle lens, I can't even fit it in. It's at 71, you make it left, and you stay on that and go over the uh, Point Pleasant Bridge. Yeah. And then that's 35. It's bikeable? You know, it's... Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you go to Point Pleasant, it's a little busy for about an hour. Yeah. And about, you know, 10 minutes. Yeah. But then the road gets quiet again. All right, great. And you are, uh, what's your name? Oh, Jay. Jay, you sound for a ride today? Yeah. yeah. Alright, good. As far as you. Uh, I don't know how far I'm going. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. So go down here. Uh, to where yeah, are we going? I'll follow you. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. 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 How are you going today? Down for about 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah, travel is often about arriving somewhere. And bicycling, though. It's all about being on the road. It's uh, kind of traveling. I mean, it's fun to arrive, but the whole day spent bicycling is the adventure. Uh, you know, you meet new people, you do stuff. Uh, it's also cheap. This is well within my budget. When you're driving, a good chunk of money, especially with the teardrop trailer, goes towards gasoline. Now, if you're driving a lot, you can rack up some big gas bills on a single day. But uh, bicycling, he's running a few bananas. And I'll tell you what, I'm running pretty good when I have French toast with uh, banana sauce and uh, pecans and uh, eggs. I'm hoping I'll burn it off. Um, pull your boat up. Have a nice uh, visit. There's a lot of these around here, these waterside homes. Yeah, weekday Friday, it's uh, 1 p.m. The roads are empty. It's wonderful. Okay, I'm entering Tom's River. Wow, I'm further south than I thought. It's a delicious breakfast, French toast and what? Oh, French toast and uh, fruit. And fruit, okay. Yes. So it's all... Uh, Good, this should be good fuel for me to ride on. Good morning, it's Saturday morning, my third day on the road. Uh, last night I made it as far south as Bayville, New Jersey, where I have a friend, and she put me up for the night. We had a nice dinner out, and uh, now I'm on the road again. I'm heading north now, I'm turning back. And yesterday, I had to resort to Google Maps on my phone. And it routed me like a car. It sent me uh, through some not so great roads, which I wasn't too, you know, I had to adapt to. But overnight, I was fooling around with the phone. And it's newbie, newbie error on my part. Now I know how to set it for a bicycle route. Uh, I'll show you that, I'll splice it in once I stop. I'll edit in uh, how to do that. Pretty easy once you do it. There's a world of difference on the roads it routes you on. For bicycling compared to car. It got me, it got me on some highways I was fearing for my life. I got off of them, I just navigated my way using the sun. I knew I had to head south. I knew I'd keep the ocean to my left, so I just used the sun. When all else fails, you can use the uh, the stars and the sun to navigate. But uh, uh, much better shape today. 
Uh, my legs are feeling it a little bit today. I'm taking it easy. Just gonna give myself time to warm up. Brooklyn Bridge. So before you uh, get into heavy duty riding, you want to make sure your bike fits you correctly. And this is a road bike, and I'm going to just check my measurements goes a long way for comfort and preventing injury. Um, an ill-fitting bike you can hurt yourself but you don't want to do that so just make sure it fits. It's like an article of clothing. The bike is almost one with you. <laughs> if it's a well-fit bike you almost feel like it's part of you. So first thing is saddle height. You put your foot at the bottom of the pedal stroke. Your, your foot, the ball of your foot should be uh, over the pedal axle and in that position some people have their feet down like that. Their heel would be down. Other people have their feet heel up. Some people are just flat. Um, with the ball of your foot over the pedal axle in your riding position, you know, your foot position, you should have about a 10 degree bend in your leg. Uh, you should not be locked straight and you should definitely not have your saddle too low. If your knee hurts in the front of your knee, your saddle's too low. If it hurts in the back of your knee, your saddle's too high. Don't tolerate any knee pain anytime. Fix it. It's easy to adjust out. Now, once you've got your saddle height set, you want to see your fore and aft position of the saddle. You uh, want to make sure that the saddle is in the right position for good transmission of energy. And the way that works is you put your foot into your pedal in riding position you bring it to the three o'clock position and when you drop a plumb bob off your knee that th string should go down and bisect the axle and the ball of your foot should be over the axle so that gets you good power transmission when you press down uh, in order to uh, make that happen you can move your saddle forward or backward and once you do that you should recheck your leg extension make sure you still have a 10 degree bend in your knee. So that'll get you fore and aft over the pedals. That'll give you a good position over the pedals. Then, once you're on here, uh, your back should be at about a 45 degree angle. Now we're talking about the length of the top tube and the way you can compensate for the length of the top tube is with a longer or shorter stem to bring the handlebars closer or further away from you. You want to have a slight bend in your el in your, uh, at your elbow when you're on the top of the uh, on the top of the bars, you should be able to comfortably reach the brake hoods. Uh, you know, in a full tuck, you should be comfortable there too. Um, if you're, you know, the, the mistakes I see are people are stretched out too far, and in those cases, you're going to get wicked shoulder fatigue, hand fatigue, arm fatigue. You're going to you're going to have some uh, some issues there. So it pays to fit that correctly. Um, Everything else from there is pretty easy. Um, you know, adjusting where your hoods are, your brake hoods are, so you can grab them, the angle of the handlebars and all that. But those are the major ones that you want to, you know, start off with to prevent injury. Make sure your leg extension is correct and make sure your, uh, your position on the saddle and the handlebars is good. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're an avid rider, 
Um, you don't want to make big changes. If you're out, if you're in, you know, it's the end of the season now. If you're an avid rider, you don't want to make big changes. You don't want to move your saddle height more than a quarter of an inch of this shot. You want to start off slowly, let your body adjust, you know. Um, if you're a new rider, set it up before you get going. Bring some wrenches, adjust it on the road. But uh, it's worth paying if you change something like your saddle. In some cases, even your shorts, if they're heavily padded, or your shoes, you may adjust the, you know, you may change your height. So just recheck your height and, uh, and you know, make sure the bike fits you well, and you'll have a much more enjoyable ride. I see a lot of people out with their saddles way too low, and uh, that's not good. You know, they're casual riders just tooling around town, um, so they're not likely to hurt themselves, but it's not good. You know, if you're an avid rider and you're doing a lot of mileage, several hundred miles a week, then, you know, you definitely wanna make sure you have the right fit. Don't ever tolerate knee pain. Don't tolerate pains in your shoulders and stuff. Find out what's wrong and try and fix it. There's plenty of information available on this. The saddle angle is another important uh, adjustment for comfort. Um, this is the way I like mine. It's mostly flat, just a slight rise to the rear. You don't want it the nose down too much. It'll push you too far forward and you don't want it up because it may cause uh, pain down there. You know, you shouldn't be having pain down there. Your, your hip bones should rest on the two bumps and that's, that's where your support comes from. You're not really sitting with your, like your, 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 your butt, fleshy parts of your butt. You're sitting on your hip bones and uh, it takes a little getting used to when you first start riding in the season. But uh, yeah, so saddle adjustment's important. This isn't meant to be, you know, a complete guide on how to tune your bike. <laughs> it's just some things to consider. There's plenty of other detailed information available on YouTube if you're going to uh, start adjusting your bike, and I, I recommend it. You get the most out of your bicycle that way. For comfort, I wanted to raise my, uh, my handlebars up a little bit, so I put some spacers on the... Uh, when I put the fork in, when I was going to cut it, I left extra length, and I put spacers in so I could raise up the handlebars a little bit higher, just for comfort. I'm touring. Uh, I really feel it in the neck sometimes, uh, from bending my neck up to look at the road, and this helped quite a bit. So.